Hello, I'm Ken Carfagno, and I'm honored and privileged to speak to you today for the 2020 Made Service Success Summit. My talk is going to be increase your efficiency and profits over 50% with optimized solo cleaning teams. So before I dive into this topic, let me talk about myself a little bit, introduce myself and share with you what makes me qualified to share this topic. There's a picture of my family. You'll see my wife, Teresa, in the center, big smile, because we have some amazing kids. We're very blessed. There's Kenny, Christiana, Kobe, Kai, and Casey. And while I record this, I literally have about a 30-minute window to get this done because Casey's upstairs sleeping. So let's, let's rock this out. Um, so here we go. I started my career, ironically, exactly 20 years ago today, July the 10th is when I'm recording this video, July 10th, 2000, I showed up at General Electric GE gas turbines in Greenville, South Carolina for the first time. I just graduated Penn State mechanical engineering degree and I'd gotten into a very prestigious program at GE, a, a leadership development program. So let me just share what I accomplished and what I did my first couple of years in my career. So GE mechanical engineer, I was trained, first of all, as a Six Sigma green belt. Now, I'm not going to get into the weeds too much. Some of you may be familiar with this. Essentially, I learned how to design for Six Sigma using statistical analysis tools. Six Sigma is essentially a system where you can design a component or a part for some kind of a large structure. For me, I was doing a gas turbine in such a way that it would fail or have a defect less than six times per million opportunities. That's Six Sigma. So I learned how to design not only with engineering skills, but with statistical tools, which has come in handy quite well in latter parts of my career. All right. The next skill set that I got with GE is I was a graduate of the Edison Engineering Development Program. Leadership, engineering skills, they were grooming me for upper management, but I had a chance to get all around the company in various rotations, plus I worked with um, a few other parts of the business between South Carolina and New York. All in all, I was there for just over five years. But that, who knew? that that would prepare me for a cleaning business. We've always been entrepreneurs. Our kids are entrepreneurs, my wife and I. I didn't see myself 40 years in a desk. So today would have literally been the 20 year anniversary of me being at my job. I'd probably get a gold watch or something and counting down the days, tick, tock, tick, for how, until I could get out of that place. And I don't feel that way now. I love what I do. I get to be an entrepreneur, take risks, and enjoy an adventure with my family. So let's keep going. In 2005, started Carfagno Cleaning Incorporated. Well, my wife started it. And I did something very odd. I cleaned by myself. No, say this and so. You didn't grow with a team. I tried, but I wasn't good at it <laughs> back then. So I stayed solo and I had these aspirations with my family. As they grew, I wanted to be with them more. And so I wanted to have a system around solo cleaning I could be with my family more. And I developed a system. Over this, over my first business, it was 13, 14 years. And in my first solo business, I optimized it using my GE skills, my engineering skills, my, my statistical skills. And my first business was five and six days a week, fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 profit, solo, no employees, no contractors. I developed a optimized solo cleaning system to go from those six days a week to two days a week still making the same income. That was awesome. Had lots of time. I had five day weekends. It was awesome. And then in 2018, I was able to sell that business for close to six figures. So our family could move back to our hometown of Philadelphia, which is where I sit right now in the suburbs of Philly, close to family. And I wanted to start a new business. So we also started a second solo cleaning business. That one's here in the Philadelphia area. I've been doing this for now two years. And I have stabilized my second business. You'll understand what that means as this goes on. But I have now stabilized my new business. You know, started at zero, initialized it. Now it's two, two and a half days a week. 
and I am earning over $50,000 profit. So I'm almost back at the level I was before and two and a half days a week. Now my goal this time around is to get to $100,000 in income, not revenue, in profit and income for my family by working two and a half days in my own cleaning business, solo cleaning houses during the week, two, two days, um, two and a half days a week or two days a week. And I work Saturdays with my, with my two oldest kids, Kenny and Christiana cleaning five offices every Saturday now, and that'll grow. So that's the, the, the cleaning business part. And I've been optimizing solo cleaning. I've been doing this for a long time. Then in 2016, started the solo cleaning school. What's that? This is the consulting part of my business. Many of you have reached out to me on Facebook. Well, how did you do that through solo cleaning? How did you get so fast? How did you get so profitable? So I started a group. I started a course. I've done, I did everything to get my content out there. Eventually, I settled on the name Solo Cleaning School. And in my school, I have the ISO model course in which I have already brought 20 plus solo owners, not team companies yet, but solo owners. And I've trained and I've been working, train them and help them help to work with them to achieve their solo cleaning goals. I've also began the solo cleaning school podcast and affiliated membership, a paid membership. The podcast itself, I'm amazed at how people find this. I'm in six continents, <laughs> downloaded 10,000 plus times every state in the country on a little cleaning podcast. So if you haven't heard the Solo Cleaning School podcast, feel free to check it out. No shameless plug there. <laughs> and I also run the Smart Cleaning Tribe. This is not for solo cleaners, this is for team cleaners, all shapes and sizes. I have found in my years and with my skill set and doing smart goals and holding people accountable in my engineering background, is that people get overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. They have all the information, but it's all cobwebs. They don't know what to do next. So I bring them into this controlled, safe place. We set goals together. We hold people accountable. That's also a paid group. All in all, you can find all of my resources at the solocleaningschool.com. That's what qualifies me to give this talk. Now let's dig into it. I can't wait to share this part here. I got some takeaways from this talk. The first one, there's a perfect storm, a Bruin. It's forming in this post-COVID world and moving industry leaders to switch their operational models from multi-cleaning teams to solo cleaning teams. Let's examine two case studies from Hannah and Chris on their incredible success as they transition their companies during COVID to solo teams. And then we'll look at the, the, the amazing potential to increase their efficiencies and profits over 50%, which is the title of this talk, using optimized solo teams. Lastly, if you go the solo teams route, okay, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but let's check this out. There's already a system to optimize solos. It's called the ISO model, and as I said, it already has helped myself do this solo optimizing thing twice, plus the, the gentleman that I trained to take over my old business who's completely optimized on his own and doing better than I was in my old business, plus the 20 I've trained personally through my podcast and members and other people that listen to my show. There's already a system in place. It's called the ISO model, and people are getting 50 plus percent increases in efficiency and profits. They're getting better work hours, better quality of life. A solo business doesn't have to control you or solo teams. You can take those to the next level. We're going to dig into that. Just know that the system I've done for solo owners is absolutely scalable to solo teams, optimized solo teams. And our industry is changing in this post-COVID world. I believe, that, I believe those that embrace the solo teams model will prosper in it. Now that I want to really dig into this perfect storm. What am I talking about, the perfect storm? It sounds bad, but actually it's really good. COVID has been a nightmare. Let's all just raise our hand. It sucked. Many of us have lost a lot of our business. Everything is different. I don't believe that we're going to go back to life as usual. I personally believe that a lot of companies, cleaning companies, which are a little shady, maybe aren't ready for the changes. They're not going to 
They're not going to raise their standards to properly disinfect, to, pro to take care of things the way they should, to not get insurance. I think a lot of cleaning businesses are going to get sifted out. The cream will rise to the top, and I believe this is a correction to our industry. And the best companies are going to emerge, and I have a weight that we can add, a tool we can add to become even better in this, in this time period. So the first part of this perfect storm is like these two things colliding is from the customer side, there's this new ick factor. How's that go, Ken? Ick factor. <laughs> that didn't sound good. It's not like it's going to the bathroom. Too much information. All right. COVID has caused pain and has caused pause in our clients. They want to minimize the spread. They watch the news. They don't want people coming into their house. They want to minimize exposure, spread, have less people in their house. They want less cross-contamination. They also want people that are helping them to come in to do stuff. They want them in and out faster. They want stuff on their shoes. They want gloves. They want masks. They want to feel safe. They want to feel safe. They want the consistency with the same cleaner. Oh no, who are they going to bring in today? They had three last time, two this time. Who is it going to be this time? They don't want that. They want to feel safe. I have a quote here from my friend Liz Trotter from American Made Cleaning and Castle Keepers. In a post-COVID world, people are super sensitive to germs and containing them. Clients want less people and they want us to work faster. That's the first part of why solo teams are going to be huge in this post-COVID world. The Wunsler effect. Our industry has been focused on one thing, growth. How fast can we get to a seven-figure business, a million-dollar cleaning company? We just got to keep on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. You ever seen the movie or read the book, The Lorax? The Wunsler is a great character. The Lorax is like, stop sending all my, all my animals away. The swami swones and the fishes and the little bears, the barbaloots, all, they're all going away because what you're doing with your business, all you care about is making things bigger. And it's like, it's so true. The, you know, the Wunsler had one ax to chop a tree and then he develops the five, the super five ax hacker to do five trees at once. And he's just making his factory bigger and bigger. You can look at it here. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. Well, I have rights to Lorax, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. A quote from the Wunsler. Let's not be the Wunsler. Let's hear this quote from my friend, who's not the Wunsler, but my buddy Alonzo Adams the chair of Arxy right now and owner of Busy Bee Cleaning Company. We need to operate as efficiently as possible in this new world. It's our duty to operate profitable businesses so we can help and impact more people in our communities. So that's part two. We as companies need to grow, but we need to focus on efficiency. Another reason why we need solo teams because they can give you all ultimate efficiency. That's the perfect storm. The clients and the business owners, for the first time, are seeing the need for efficient solo cleaning teams. Enter the optimized solo cleaner. Solo teams case study number one. My friend Hannah Breeze, Shine and Sparkle Cleaning Services in Dallas, Oregon. Check this out. Hannah was hesitant at first, but the numbers won out. She piloted the model, the solo team's model, with a few hand-selected cleaning techs before COVID. She personally cleaned solo for two years very efficiently, so no one could pull one over her, on her. Some other takeaways from her transition. Each solo comes into the office to start the day, to grab supplies, and attend a five to 10 minute team meeting. Hannah uses this time efficiently, efficiently. And she works on schedules and mindset in these meetings. Hannah pays hourly. Some are commission, that's fine. Some are hourly. And here's what she said. When we switched from teams to solos, the solos were getting done and coming back to the office with nothing to do. She didn't know what to give them. And I made a huge mistake not having the extra houses in time. Now, COVID didn't help that, but it's lost opportunity. Opportunity cost. If she had 10, 20 more houses, they could have gone and done in more they could have done more houses. She could have made more money. Same hourly labor costs for Hannah. And the big win so far for Hannah, and she's only incorporated this about six, seven months now, solo teams are much more productive. Her solos can nearly 
double the output of her teams. Hannah was able to train her staff, I'm sorry, trim her staff and train her staff from eight down to just under six full-time um, team members. And it's almost, and it is almost back to her pre-COVID revenue with less people. That's sick, Hannah, great job. Solo teams, case study number two, my friend Chris Willett of Alpine Maids in Denver, Colorado. Here's what he pulled away, some of his takeaways from the switch. Intended to make the shift before COVID <clears throat> as the minimum wage was increasing in Denver to $16 an hour. Chris needed a way to pay enough to keep his cleaners from going to Walmart and Target and getting 16 bucks. He knew he had to get them like 20. It's his goal right now is give him $20 an hour. So he, he knew that shift was going to help him get there. But he struggled. Another reason why he wanted to shift. He struggled with his team players saying, I don't want to work with Susie. I don't want to work with Barbara. I don't want to work with John. Not just ladies, it's guys too. He wanted autonomous cleaners that wanted to work solo. He realized during the process that his hiring system was wrong for solos. They were different animals altogether. Chris's big mistake was believing he could just communicate the change and then take action. He believes he should have identified a few to pilot first, get the wins, and start to sell the concept to each other. And his biggest win so far, this is awesome, solo teams, the model for solo teams requires five less techs for his company to accomplish the same revenue, which amounts to a 5% reduction or decrease in cost of goods sold. And in his size company, around a million dollars, that's a $50,000 savings, which translates directly into his pocket or in how he wants to reinvest that money into his company. Advertising, pay his people more so they don't go work at Target or back in his pocket. 50,000 bucks. It's awesome. Let's look at the potential for Chris and Hannah. Potential to optimize solo teams. They've made the switch from team, two and three person teams to solo teams. I want to talk to you about optimized solo teams, which is part two in the transition. Hannah and Chris have already done the hardest part. They've committed to a new model in their cleaning business. I applaud them for their courage. Solo teams are not for everyone, but check this out. I ran some analysis, ran some analysis for Hannah and Chris and the potential is staggering. Here's a chart, here's a table. You can look at it, I'll give you the takeaways. Takeaway number one, in both cases, the average annual revenue per cleaning tech in a two-person team is around $50,000. You see $53,000 for Shine and Sparkle and Hannah, $51,000 for Chris and Alpine Maids. So this is consistent with the current industry experience, $50,000 in revenue per hire, per cleaner. But it gets better. In both cases, Chris and Hannah switched over to a solo teams hybrid model. That means they still have teams and they have solo teams, which means they're not getting the full benefit of solo teams, but they're getting some. Now watch this. The switch to a hybrid solo team model has already yielded a 5% boost in profits for Chris and a 17% boost in profits for Hannah. If you look at their revenue per cleaning tech in the solo teams, it's gone from 50 to roughly $65,000 per solo cleaner. This is awesome. And lastly, this is the one that will just mind blowing. Each company is just getting started as both see the potential of a 80% increase. I say 50% in the topic here, in the title of my talk, but both of these examples and case studies have a potential of 80% increase in cleaning efficiency and profits. That's a combination of raising their revenues and decreasing their, their, their expenses, which is a total increase in efficiency and in profits. This is phenomenal. Now, they need to do this by incorporating, implementing the, um, the solo, optimized solo model called the ISO model that I have. And what's so cool is they don't have to do the entire thing. They might not get the whole 80%. They might want to keep a hybrid model. They might only want to part, incorporate part of my system. They can take 30% increase. That's fine with me. They can go 50. They can go 80. 
but the opportunity and the potential is there. That's what's so exciting about this. Let's talk about the ISO model for optimized solo teams. You're wondering, what is the ISO model? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to share it with you. Just mindset and background on what it is. I, initialize. Here's what you learn. Learn to get the right people on the bus. You need, for this new solo cleaning model, you need solo cleaners that think like a business but desire the security of a job. We want them autonomous and independent. We don't want them to steal our clients and start their own business. They want the security of the job. They also don't want the headaches or the stress of a business owner. They need to be trustworthy, accountable, teachable, and hungry. Get those four characteristics into a solo cleaning teams, you're on track. You also learn in the initialize part of my system is how to develop a pool marketing system which brings prospects up a trust curve, increasing demand for your services and increasing your revenue per client. The stabilize part of my system is learning the science and the art of cleaning to further increase your trust factor. As your sales and marketing team, your solos, cleaners, your trainers, they can all become cleaning specialists and I can train them in this. This increases your perceived value in the marketplace and also increases your revenue per client. That's a good thing. Plus it teaches your solo cleaners how to get faster by learning how to think through their cleaning. And finally, the optimize, my favorite part, learn the optimization cycle. Engine nerd Ken comes out. Learn the optimization cycle so your solos can own their own set of clients, build trust like crazy with those set of clients, and speed up their cleaning. Increase your revenues, decrease your labor costs, increase your efficiencies, get faster. These all promote super optimized solo cleaning teams. Start wrapping this up. What's next? I do not have a system for helping you transition from teams to solos. Hannah and Chris did a remarkable job. Many other of you out here listening to this may have already done this. Maybe you already run solos. If you're thinking about it, look, there's some excellent people in our industry. Ask around. I'm not the guy to help you transition. I know my place. I know my lane. You can glean from the Hannahs and the Chris's of the world. But here's what I learned from st talking to them and, and looking at their case studies. You need a cohesive plan. And from my conversations with them, here's what I recommend from talking to Chris and Hannah. Number one, map out your business on paper with solo teams to see the potential. Then decide if it makes sense for your business and goals. Talk one-on-one. -on -one. Don't do what Chris did, right? Talk one-on-one -on -one with your best people to see who is most trustworthy, accountable, teachable, and hungry. And like, I love what Chris said, I didn't write it in the talk, but what he said to me um, on our call, he said, Ken, if I don't have the right people on my team, there will be controlled turnover. I'm like, Chris, that's a really great term. And he's kind of left, but it's true. He needs to find the right people to get them on the bus. And then third, design a beta or a pilot program to test this new solo team model with your best people. And lastly, take action. Don't just plan and plan and plan. Take action like Hannah and Chris. Get wins and communicate them to your team to win their support. Be optimistic, be flexible, and be patient. It's not going to work out as you expect, but it will work out if you fight through it. It's not an easy change. Finally, Check out my website, www.solocleaningschool.com. I've got some free resources to help you grapple with this, to get your arms around this more. If you like this talk, there's some more things you can do. So if you want to go dive deeper into my ISO model for optimized solo teams, again, here's some free resources. Number one, the Solo Cleaning School podcast. I mentioned this already. I created this show for the solo owner to develop the proper mindset of owning a cleaning company. If you're evaluating solo teams, feel free to listen to yourself or pass my podcast on to your trainers, to your sales and marketing people, and your, your top cleaning techs. Let them listen. Get the mindset of solo optimized cleaning and the, and the entrepreneur's mind of that and the ownership mentality and the excellence mentality. Get that into your, into your people. Next free resource, how to earn $100 per hour cleaning houses masterclass. 
That's a lot of words. <laughs> In this one hour presentation, you will learn the mindset to get better and higher paying clients, the art of creating scarcity, and the science of optimizing your solo teams or your solo owner's business. The other free resource I want to offer is if you like the masterclass, check out the Solo Cleaning Optimizers Mindset mini course. This is a follow-up one-hour video series that teaches you more mindset into the increasing of your per-client revenue, developing that pool marketing system I mentioned before. So these are all free resources on my website, solocleaningschool.com. And lastly, ISO model training. I do have paid options a membership if you're a solo owner and if you're, a, if you're going to transition to a solo team and you want help, you want me to help train your solo teams to become optimized solo uh, cleaning teams, I have uh, paid options available. You can work with me personally and we, I can do consulting packages. There's different options. Just reach out to me and we can discuss. But again, I highly recommend go check out my website and see what you can find there and just dig into this material. All right, that wraps up our talk for this year's 2020 Made Success Summit. I want to thank you again. This has been a lot of fun sharing. I hope you felt the energy. I love this stuff, and I believe this perfect storm. This is the time. Be aware. The change is coming. Those that embrace it are going to win in this new post-COVID economy.